For every person in the United States, there are about two to three times more parking spaces than necessary, and these parking spots are usually made out of asphalt or other impervious material, which creates environmental and financial deficiencies. So the intent of the reduced parking footprint credit is to reduce the number of parking spaces and minimize the environmental harms associated with parking facilities, including automobile dependence, land consumption, rainwater runoff. In this video, we are going to provide some important information related to reduced parking footprint and explain how to earn the credit step by step. Step 1. Determine local code requirements. First of all, if the project doesn't have associated off-street parking, then it achieves credit compliance. You don't need to do any calculations. Otherwise, you need to identify if there's a minimum amount of parking required by local code, and then you need to make sure that the project's maximum allowable parking is less than or equal to the code requirement. For example, Let's say City A has a local code requirement that you need at least 400 space for your project, but City B has no minimum. In City B, your project automatically meets the requirement and move on to Step 2. For City A though, you will have to work with the local government to get a variance for having less parking spaces than the code requirement. Step 2. Calculate base ratios and baseline parking capacity. Using the Transportation Planning Handbook, based on the project's space use type and size, you need to determine the base ratio. Let's say your project is a 100,000 square feet office building. Then, the amount of parking spaces you should provide is 340. If the project has multiple space types, you need to calculate the base ratio separately by using the table referenced in the Lead Reference Guide the Institute of Transportation Tables 18-2 through 18-4. Step 3. Identify appropriate case. There are two different cases that you can pick in this credit. Case 1. Baseline location. If the project hasn't earned points under surrounding density and diverse uses or access to quality transit, then you must achieve a 20% reduction from the base ratio. Case 2. Dense and or transit served location. If the project earned one or more points under either surrounding density and diverse uses or access to quality transit, then you must achieve a 40% reduction from the base ratio. If your 100,000 square feet office building hasn't earned points from these credits, you have to reduce the base ratio by 20% so you can only provide 272 parking spots. If it did earn one or more points, then you must reduce the base ratio by 40%. In this case, the project shouldn't have more than 204 parking spots. Step 4. Estimate parking demand. As the next step, you need to estimate how many cars are likely to drive to and from your project then you need to check if this number is less than the local code and the capacity you calculated from the base ratio. You can use Trip Generation Handbook, which is provided by the Institute of Transportation Engineers, to get the estimated demand. Step 5. Development and Implement Strategies. The goal is to reduce the demand for parking spaces by the building occupants, including both existing and new parking. Even when no new parking is added, the requirements still must be met with the existing parking. To significantly reduce the amount of parking needed, strategies need to be thought of and implemented within each project. For example, with the 100,000 square feet office space, if the estimated demand is higher than the calculated base ratio and local code minimum, some strategies to reduce the demand for the parking spaces for the office space are emphasizing carpooling, allowing employees to telecommute, and locating the office near public transportation. Step 6. Determine the project's reduced parking capacity. To calculate the reduced parking capacity, first, the project's total parking capacity is to be calculated by counting the already existing and new spaces, spaces in parking garages, and any other off-street parking spaces that are able to be used by the project. Second, 
By using the equation, as you can see in the slide, by subtracting the total provided capacity from the total baseline capacity, then dividing it by the total baseline capacity and multiplying that by 100% to get that parking reduction percentage. The baseline capacity is determined in step two and the total provided capacity is usually given or determined by the site plans. Continuing to use the office example, let's assume that we are complying with case one requirements. The total baseline capacity would be 340 spaces and the total provided capacity is 200. Using the given equation, the reduced parking capacity would be 41%, which is larger than the 20% reduction minimum for case one. Step seven, provided carpool parking. This is another requirement that is based on the project's reduced parking capacity. At least 5% of the spaces must be reserved for preferred parking carpools. Preferred parking is the parking spaces that are closest to the main entrance or the best parking spaces in each parking area. Going back to the office example, of the 200 spaces being provided for the office building project, 10 of those spaces will be allocated to preferred parking carpools, thus meeting the 5% requirement. Finally, when submitting for this credit in the LEED certification process, some required documentation is needed, such as site plan in that indicates the parking areas and where the preferred parking spaces are, all the calculations done that show that you have achieved the threshold, and any drawings, photographs of signage and pavement markings that indicate the reserve status for those par preferred parking spaces. Thank you.